Hey guys, hope you're all doing well and thank you for tuning in. Just want to give a little introduction to this long interview you're about to see. This interview was actually not even supposed to be on this channel. I met up with guys in Cape Town uh, from a channel called Air Hunters. I'll link their channel down below. Fantastic guys. They've got some really, really awesome places to shoot. And in the space of two days, we probably got enough footage for like three or four action-packed videos. So those will be on my channel and on their channel. Um, I think they've already put a video up actually so I'll, I'll link that down below you guys can check it out But I'm gonna be putting up my own edits for those hunts. It's gonna be fantastic But we sat down at, at one point during the weekend and they wanted to ask me a few questions about um, A lot of the things that they had been seeing on my channel um, the the slug liners some of the scope some of the accessories on my impact um, You know questions about hunting permissions and I actually had some questions for them as well But anyway, we we put that all in an interview and after we'd recorded this interview, um, we actually came to the conclusion that this was such good information that we knew a lot of the shooting world would want to actually see. And we decided because I had a much bigger subscriber base and viewer base than, than they did, that, that it should actually go on my channel just so that it reaches more people. Um, so I really want to thank firstly the guys from Air Hunters for allowing me to put this on my channel, even though it was originally supposed to be their video. Really, really nice of them to do that. But watch the following video. There's a lot of really interesting information. I'll put an index in the video description so you can you can skip to specific parts if you want to see them. I think there's some really good stuff there. So without further ado, to the interview we go. I see the guinea fowls joining the interview as well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> All right, let's get it started. Martinez. <laughs> okay, guys. So we're gonna just ask the one thing I want to talk to Matt about is quickly his setup with all the guns he's got here both of these impacts um, the footage you guys saw so far is really amazing mm. so obviously the gun is really this gun is really performing well yeah so matt's got slug liners in both of these guns uh we're shooting what slugs are we shooting at the moment here with these ones so in this gun over here which is like my pumped out impact which i'm mainly using for testing purposes is an impact x and the impact x the regulator is a bit more it's able to handle higher pressures um, and I've also played around with the hammer spring and stuff mm. just to experiment But um, in this gun I'm shooting 26 grain slugs at 950 feet per second yeah. and then in my old impact which you have there um, I'm shooting 23 grain slugs at 950 and this one is pretty much set up um, This is my old original impact. So this is set up standard with the reg at like 150 155 bar yeah. around there um, mm. Which the old impacts can handle no problem. You see and, and this is this is yeah. one thing I like mm. about the setup you've got over here so this gun is there's no extra tuning or no extra mm. things done to this gun this is as original as they come and um, i think i think that's the gun we used for some of those really long shots yeah, like yeah. 130 135 yes. meters like so it doesn't have this one's a it's got a bit of a, a ballistic advantage with the higher bcs but i mean that mm. one's still but gonna it's also got a bit pellets. more recoil and it's more a bit more violent yeah i mean you're gonna less you're gonna get less shots per full out of this mm and the, the harmonics are a bit more sensitive so for example now this morning i had this scope camera on when you shoot through this scope camera you can't put your cheek against the the, the cheek piece here and even not having my cheek against the cheek piece my point of impact was off compared to what i'd zeroed it at so that's the disadvantage of having a, a high power gun um i will say this though the the harmonics in in a 2g caliber shooting slugs mm. even this one that's pimped out it's still less violent than a 30 mm. caliber at standard speeds or at 25 shooting heavy slugs i mean heavy pellets so um yes the, you do have disadvantages of shooting the the heavier slugs at higher speeds but in reality it's still yeah, going to be um it's still going to give you an advantage over like a 30 caliber so it's stuff to consider as well so this gun and that gun i've got an fx impact myself i'm shooting a normal x barrel at the moment yeah uh one do one thing i picked up right from the beginning <coughs> is how quiet these guns are we're shooting yeah. at really high power <laughs> and i was yeah. expecting much more yeah. They're actually quieter than the pellet it yeah. is the and you, there's absolutely no difference if you pull the trigger on a normal 22 pellet or you pull the trigger on these slugs there's no difference. You won't even know he's shooting a slug when he pulls the trigger on these guns. Yeah, that's that's actually surprised me the most as well because I, you expect it to be more violent, but I think it's got something to do with the fact that, um, yes, your your working pressure is a bit higher, but mm. the the actual time that the, the valve is open for is the same, if not less. Yeah, so you, less. what you have when you have a higher reg pressure, yes, you're going to have more 
the, the pressure of the air released into the, the barrel is going to be more, but that pressure is what closes the valve as well. So the valve actually closes quicker, and so the result of that is by the slug, by the time the slug exits the barrel, that, that valve's already closed, so it's still going to be dead quiet. Um, I, yeah, it's, I, no, I can't explain, you have to try it out for yourself, but, but this, this is no different to um, shooting pellets. It's, the sound is about the same, and you, you, you do feel a bit more like a, a little bit more recoil, a little but bit it's, of it's more very, recall, but very it's, little. It's less you than you'd can expect. You barely feel it on a 23 it's, yeah, one. It's, it's less than you'd expect. Yeah. yeah. This is the more powerful one between the two guns here. Uh, obviously, that one is shooting heavier grain slugs. Yes. Um, but like I said, both of these guns I've shot now today and yesterday, and they really perform really, really well. One thing I'm really surprised of is uh, if you shoot these guns at long range, usually you have on the pellets there's a lot of holdover. Um, these things just fly. Flat, yeah. hey? really, really flat. Yes, and it actually takes you by surprise. You pull the trigger, <laughs> you look through the scope. Yeah. You're actually waiting for that 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 slug actually to get there. But you pull the trigger, it's there. That's, yeah. It's noticeable. It's, how yeah, quickly it gets there. Um, I'm not used to it. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, that's that's it. Uh, when I first started shooting the slugs, I actually I, I filmed a video where I was shooting dussies with the slugs, and I, I missed so many shots just over the top because I was so used to the, that in, that instinct that you build yeah, up yeah. after from with ex the experience brain, yeah. of shooting pellets you've got to completely retrain your brain um <laughs> it's crazy but i think pellets they all have similar bcs across all calibers yeah. a 22 caliber and a 30 caliber yes a 30 caliber is a slightly better bc but a 30 caliber you're generally shooting a bit slower as well so the time it takes to get down range mm. is about the same these are on a whole a whole nother level where I mean, we were looking at I the retained muzzle velocity at, at, at 200 meters. Yeah, that was great. This slug has more velocity <laughs> than a pellet at 100 meters. That's just 200 insane. meters. That's double the distance, and it's still got more velocity. That's just um, insane. That's it's a crazy it's, it's thing. It's insane. Um, <laughs> and uh, we were shooting some tight groups at 25 meters this morning, but a lot of the time when you're shooting with the slug barrels, the 25 there meter groups groups are not going to be overwhelmingly impressive. And I think that that um, kind of turns a lot of people off when you when you see that and you see well my pellets can shoot yeah. tighter group you you think that it's you know better, it's going to yeah. do better but um it's not it's not necessarily the case yes you might in perfect conditions like we have today the pellets will be perfectly fine um you're going to shoot tight groups at long range but it's it's not about the tight groups it's actually about predicting where that group is going to be yeah. um mm. anything that shoots um within let's say two two and a half MOA which is pretty much every high quality air gun is going to be perfectly fine for long range shooting yeah. but can you put that can you put that pellet where you where you expect it to be in the first shot yeah and the first so shot is the one that counts if you're shooting extreme bench rest and you've got sighted targets that's not a problem because you can check exactly where those pellets are hitting on the sighted targets and then you can adjust but if, up, if yeah. you have to take if you've got extreme bench rest and you have to take if you don't have sight targets, you're going to be stuffed shooting pellets because you have no idea where they're going to go. Um, and that's the wind, difference between hunting yeah. and, and target but shooting is you don't get a sight gusts, target. When there's wind gusts and stuff like that, it really messes up your your aim point. Cause, yeah. And I just find with the slugs, you don't have to worry about that as yeah. much. I, I do want to also mention here, I'm, I'm really not against pellets at all. In fact, I, yeah. I, Pellets are absolutely here to stay, and they're good. most people are going to want to shoot pellets because they are way more forgiving with your with your barrel. It's much easier to get them to shoot mm. well. They use a lot less air. They're much safer to shoot with in terms of more how far they travel. Well. More economical. Like Everything time. about them is better, except for long range performance. Mm. So pellets are here to stay. I'm absolutely not against them. Um, I, I'm just excited about the prospect of being able to shoot slugs in oh, these guns because it opens up a whole new world. It's like it's like over the past year my eyes have been opened to some to a whole new world that previously there was this barrier that no matter how good your gun was you can't do certain things but i experienced that yesterday because i'm shooting pellets the whole weekend and they, these two were shooting slugs and there was a little bit about a 15 kilometer an hour wind around there yeah and they were taking 140 meter shots like yeah. it's nothing and <laughs> yeah. i was like second guessing should i take this shot because i know i'm yeah. guessing it I don't know what the pellet's going to do down range because it's casting a bit and yeah it, it bucks the wind really really well yeah that comes up to the next thing i want to talk about mm -hmm. is the way these slugs hit 
Oh, <laughs> yeah. That poor sparrow. Then, <laughs> you can put that insert in yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that thing exploded. Yeah, there were a few actually, a few exploding sparrows. Yeah. Look, yeah. Um, we've been shooting, like they've said now as well, we've been shooting a couple of pellets as well <laughs> during the course of these two days. And uh, the difference between the hitting power of, no, of pellets versus yeah. the slugs is the gap is huge. Yeah. yeah. You know, usually um, when you go out there and you got your pellets in your rifle and you start hunting, you, you really got to concentrate on your shot placement. Yes. Mm. Um, with these slugs, I think we've got a little bit of more forgiving on the forgiving side. Oh yeah. yeah. So you don't really have to be that accurate because mm. the the slug will really dump a lot of energy on whatever you're going to shoot. Yes. Mm. And uh, you know, we saw pigeons going down yesterday, and uh, the pellet does a good job if you put mm. the pellet in the right mm. place, but the slugs just absolutely smacks whatever you're shooting and it's taking it straight down to the yeah. ground so there's but no this, second yeah. guess so, so this must is a, be important as well about the hollow point yeah i'm going to mention that yes. um, yeah. the, the hitting power is a factor of two things it's, mm. firstly it's a factor of um uh retained energy so mm. how much energy you're hitting with and obviously the slugs are a little bit heavier so that helps but even if you were shooting at the same muzzle energy or the same energy at, at the target um I, I will say that the pellets actually have they're actually a good shape for, for the transfer of energy. That round nose Diablo shape. They open up nicely. And um, they, they transfer a lot of energy. So a pellet on target does a very good job as opposed to a slug with a sharp point. If you, I mean, I shot the early Nielsen slugs which had smaller hollow points and they were using a harder uh, alloy. Yeah. And they zipped straight through. But we experienced and that. We with actually the, found with the we and got the, the condo. same yeah. thing with the condo and the Uber now. Yeah. Day. That Slugs were basically passing through, through them and then right the, fly, the pigeon yeah. flies away. So that's one thing to mention. You, you, you're going to need to, if you are going to shoot you slugs, to you need to use hollow point slugs because yeah. if you're using or, or maybe slugs with a round nose, but that kind of defeats the point of using a slug. You want that yeah. high BC. You so want it, yeah. you, you want, you're going to want to use a slug with a, a nice sharp um, point, but a, a, a big hollow Drawing point. point yeah. And you're going to want to use something with soft lead. Um, I'm using pure lead. Um, Nielsen Specialty Ammo makes their slugs with pure lead and so does Rat Sniper slugs. I'll put a link to, well you guys can put a link to both yeah, of those below. Yeah. Um, they both make really good slugs with really good hollow points um, and, and that's going to be important because if you don't have a uh, slug that's made of a soft alloy and that's made um, with a large hollow point, it pencils straight through and that energy isn't transferred at all. Yeah, it's not dumped. It's Whereas these, nice I mean these are yeah definitely opening up you can hear it yeah. immediately so Look, yeah that's something to note <laughs> the thump the thump on these slugs hitting a pigeon yeah no, what it's, like a, it's, it's days like a balloon really popping yeah. <laughs> it's, it's loud yeah. we had a guy walking from around the shed asking what was that yeah, <laughs> yeah. look and then exploded. look Matt's got really two beautiful scopes on these guns. I Oof. mean, you guys can see this yeah, is two yeah, really I'm, I'm nice spoiled. scopes. I'm really yeah. spoiled. Next level stuff. <laughs> really, really yeah. spoiled. And look, I've dialed these scopes in these two days. You can swing them all the way up to 120 meters. You can dial them all the way back to zero. It keeps it perfectly. And yeah. the glass inside yeah. here, especially with the camera equipment we're using, it's just stunning. It's really, yeah. really stunning. Very nice setup you've got here. Yeah, um, um, the one thing about scopes is I fully understand that people, that not everyone can afford mm. scopes like yeah. this with reliable turrets. So my, adva my advice would be, if you have any scope that's uh, under 10,000 Rand, mm. like let's say, I don't, know, I don't know what the conversion is to dollars exactly, Probably but $600, yeah. $600 $700, yeah. 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 Anything under that, you, you, you're not, you're not going to be able to trust the turrets as much mm. as we, we can on, on these yeah. scopes here. Um, like over the past few days we've been shooting with um, these night forces have been shooting with uh, uh, the, the vortex, um, yeah. and and we're able to dial all the way up and dial all the way down. It's not yeah, a problem. No if, problem. My, my advice would be if I'm you're not using try it with my hawk scope, yeah. 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 if you if you're using a hawk or if you're using an optizan or if you're using an Aztec, um, my advice would be to zero the scope and then just hold because mm. the, um, using the reticle for holdover doesn't in any way test the mechanic the no, mechanics no. of the gun. No. Sure, you might need to check zero again to make sure like the reticle hasn't been bumped off or anything I'm a, but but you shouldn't be cranking it all the way up all the way down and expecting to come back to zero so my advice would be these scopes have great glass the, uh, nowadays yeah, there's nothing wrong with it yeah but nowadays yeah, the the field. nowadays most scopes you know most not entry level but this is like a mid-range scope mid -range. they all have glass that's more than good enough for for long-range shooting and the great reticle designs that's something we've been spoiled with great reticle yeah. designs yeah. and as long as 
you are make sure you make sure that your rifle's cal your scope is calibrated at that exact magnification. I know my my hawk I had an issue where the reticle is actually calibrated at like 11 and a half times instead of 10 so yeah. it was a, just a quality <laughs> control issue so if you can check that and make sure then you you should zero your, your turrets keep them there and just hold off instead of mm. dialing because putting your, your the turrets of scopes like this through all that testing is probably not good for them and you're probably going to find a few shots you know you're not, not returning of, to yeah. zero you're gonna yeah. have a couple of misses yeah then, but if you uh, can afford one of these, then yeah, look, then I would I I definitely did, recommend yeah, them. Yeah, well, definitely I would say recommend this guy's them. probably more expensive than the gun. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it is. It's more, yeah, but it makes a huge difference. Yeah, really look, does. and then I must I must compliment these magazines, eh? Oh, they're on, great on these guns. I don't know if you guys can see over there. Yeah, side shot mags. The side shot yeah. mags, and these things, it's just wonderful. And yeah. the you know, side shot scope mount as well. I mean, yeah, side shots doing a wonderful job. Yeah, the look, design soft. Top notch. This, yeah. I must be honest, I've seen these side shot mags quite a bit uh, on the internet and uh, I've seen a couple in real life but I haven't used them myself. Yeah. And uh, they just work perfectly, eh? Yeah. They just but it's not really it's nice. not just about the capacity, it's the my favorite thing, I mean I'm happy with the 18 shot yeah. FX magazine. Yeah. I'm not that's mm. perfectly fine. But it's it's the, but the, the it's it's the loading mechanism. Yeah, you that, can that's what's open impressive. It up and drop it in, you that, don't have to yeah, drop it in. You don't have to rotate it around. That's, that's what I feature. like that's yeah. what I like the most. So um and that's something people don't know that they do that. Yeah, we can actually so, put an insert somewhere. Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll put a little insert now. in. Yeah, how uh, we load up down. these magazines, and they're really, really easy. Yeah, yeah. Um, fantastic. And really it'll be easy up to load. You, you can you buy these magazines with a little bracket attached yes. to the bottom, yeah. so everything comes as a package. Mm. You can just bolt it on onto your impact. Perfect. Yeah, fantastic. So yeah, look, really impressive. Um, I must say we had a lot of fun so far. Um, that's what not where we're going to stop it. We I, gonna, yeah. I just want to say I've one noticed. thing. Yeah. yeah. Is, um, what we learned and what we didn't know is how precise the barrel must be for slugs to shoot well yeah, out yeah. of them. You yeah. can't just shoot slugs out of any barrel. Yeah. Especially not Lothar Walter barrels or smooth twist barrels. It must be designed specifically. And Matt can talk yeah. a little bit more about how Look, a lot of sensitive that is. Yeah. So a lot of the slugs that have been made have been made for specific barrel brands. So like these, these Nielsen slugs, they were they were tested on TJ barrels and Lothar Walther barrels. So you might get decent results out of them, but let's say you buy a Lotha Walther barrel that's just slightly, slightly different to the one that they tested the slugs yeah, yeah. in, just a hundredth it's or two hundredths of so a millimeter sensitive. difference. Um, they're not going to shoot well. And my, even though the slugs that these Nielsen slugs were tested in in Lotha Walther barrels out of a day state, when I tried them in my day state, I couldn't get them to group at all. So my barrel must be slightly different. Yeah. So. What you need with the slugs is because the, the, the bearing surface of the slug, is, it's not forgiving at all. A, a pellet, the, the skirt can flex, the head can adapt a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you, it's very forgiving and that's why I think slug, uh, pellets are absolutely here to stay because the, every single barrel ma manufacturer is, is slightly different. The, the groove dimensions, yeah. land dimensions between Lothar Walther and FX is totally different. Yeah. So you have to have a slug or a barrel that's made to shoot a specific size slug. So my involvement with the uh, slug barrels is basically I wanted to see I, I believe this is the future and I basically went to the FX factory and, and spoke to the guys and said look um, I'm really keen to to work with you guys on, on developing something that that is at least going to contribute to the egg and world in some way and mm -hmm. and we developed the the slug liners in a way that we found exactly what worked best we found um, the exact right barrel dimensions to the nearest hundredth of a millimeter and every single barrel every single slug liner that comes out there is optimized for a, for that exact caliber um, so very slug. fine yes. tolerances that they work with yes and yeah. uh, the, the downside to that though is that those slug liners take a long time to to make and a long time to test because you need to put extra care into them if mm. you know if you just choke it slightly too much or slightly too little your accuracy is gone and so whoever's working at the choking machine you know you, he might have to even discard <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the barrels that he makes because then Probably, if, when yeah. he measures them and, and he realizes he's, he's choked them too much that's it that's that also done. puts the cost up yeah so the cost really is going to be higher and the time it takes to make them is going to be much like much much more because the pellet barrels it's a much 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 easier process um so be patient with slug liners because yeah. at the moment they they do take much longer to put out and they do require someone who has knowledge about the slugs, about how they shoot, which at the moment, the only person in the FX factory that knows that is Johan Axelsson. Mm -hmm. So Johan and Frederick, basically, they're the only two in the whole factory that have the ability to physically test the liners. Mm -hmm. And so, 
sure. you know, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a long time coming, but um, we are working on it and we're gonna figure and it we out. You can assume yeah. they're pretty busy with other stuff as well. Yeah. So. The way you can help though is if you <laughs> if you can if you are interested and you let your dealer know or you let FX know that you're interested in Slugliner and they realize there's actually dem demand for it. Because at, at the moment it's been, people are just starting to figure this thing out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So once they realize there's demand for it, then they, they will be able to train and, em and, and employ new people to, to do that task spe specifically. Yeah. And it, But it needs to be, it needs to get to that point. And it's yeah. the same thing with the slugs. Well. The, the cost right. of the slugs yeah. at the moment is very expensive because they're not being made in large quantities. But the moment there's demand, those companies can then afford that expensive machinery to make slugs in bulk at high quality. That makes sense for them which to invest in. I understand yeah. that's what they're doing right yeah. now. So it's gonna be a few short months before the price of slugs go down. Mm. And the more of you buy slug liners and start shooting slugs, mm. the more the price is gonna go down and eventually they're probably gonna be the same as a JSB. So that's exciting as well. That would be Look, awesome. At the end of the day, to wrap everything up, you know, a lot of people, I must be honest, me, myself, I've shot a couple of slugs before from other rifles. And uh, what is, if I may say, mm. what I've seen so far from FX in these slug liners, what you guys have been doing so far, is really, really fantastic. Um, I can tell you guys one thing, do what Matt is telling you guys to do. Try to inquire about the slug liners, mm. Uh, mm. try to make contact with the dealers, you know. Um, and from a hunting perspective, uh, these slug liners is really a must. Uh, yeah. It's definitely the next step up. I would, I would go as far as say, don't even waste your time yes. with other guns and barrels no. trying to shoot slugs. You're just gonna get frustrated. Yeah, get, yeah. And, and really, FX has put a lot of time in these yeah. slug lines, like Matt said and as if well. If you get one that shoots good, you're just gonna be extremely lucky. Yeah. It's just gonna <laughs> yeah. be luck. <laughs> yeah, the, the thing is, um, yeah, so, and, I, and I'm working full, t I'm, I'm really trying hard to, mm -hmm. to get, the, get the ball rolling in that. I've, I'm going to the FX factory in about two weeks. I'm literally going to be there for a whole week um, testing barrels, slug barrels. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we're going to make as many as we can. We, I'm going to personally test them to make sure that they're shooting yeah. like that at, at the 40 meter mm -hmm. test range. So that when they go out to you guys, you're going to get good barrels. Um, but wow. as I'm saying, it's, it's a work in progress and we are, we, it's, there are going to be some hiccups along the way. Yeah. But it's um, like anything, it's still, as, any from what I, and, yeah. yeah. From, but from what I've seen, it's new technology, but it's still it's still better than trying to shoot slugs out of your pellet barrels because it's just some not it's just not what they're made for. And it's as simple as that. Well, if you go to the hunting grounds, what we've done in the last couple of days, and we take shots up to like 140 meters. Yeah, <laughs> you can't you can't complain. Or what no, you can't you complain, complain about, about that. that? I mean, then these yeah. these these slugs are definitely doing the right job. So yeah, no, they work. Definitely Absolutely. a must. Um, yeah. So while the tractor moves in, <laughs> yeah, we've got a lot of noise going on now. The yeah. farmer is getting alive, yeah. <laughs> getting also some. Also got uh, a, a, a flight training yes. <laughs> center close by. There's yeah. a lot of planes in the air in the morning. Yeah. So uh, quite a bit of activity. Uh, I think we've uh, said what we need to say for I've now. I've got questions. I got a question for you yeah. guys. Okay. So I get a lot of questions, or I've I've got a lot of questions myself actually about um, the. The whole legality of for, for yeah, people who yeah. don't know and um, because the, the way I see it if, if you've got a nice gun like this you you're gonna want to go you, shoot, you yeah. want a place to go shoot but yeah. but you've got to also respect the law and you've got to do it the right way and the, the first thing I would recommend you to do is to look at the your provincial hunting gazette if you're in South yeah. Africa obviously laws in other countries are different but if you're yeah. in South Africa look at your hunting gazette hunting proclamations and and look at um, like bag limits bag limits yeah. and hunting seasons um, you're gonna need to get your own hunting license so you're gonna need to go to your local gun yeah. shop or whatever and that is yeah. so easy so to easy get, it's like 20 um, rand in, in, yeah. No, not 20, but 200. Yeah, we rand look yeah, down 20 rand in, in, in Eastern Cape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, down in the Western yeah. Cape, we pay 250. Yeah, which is around licenses. 30, 25 dollars. Yeah. yeah. It's not a lot, and it's yeah. for a whole year, so it's, yeah. it's easy. And it's literally going in two minutes, in office, two minutes later. You, you got, got your, your license. license yeah. They yeah. just sign it, you sign it, and it's done. Yeah. Just, just to, just to, to, to tap, mm. tap on that again, um, on the legal side, look, coming back to where you hunt and, and permissions all that kind of stuff guys i'm gonna say it again please wherever you go to shoot make sure make sure you're allowed to shoot there yes. number one and make sure you got permission yeah. now this is important Not in wording in in, in writing, in writing. Yeah. it yeah. needs to be on a form it needs to be 
professionally written out and signed off from yeah. the person on the grounds that you're hunting yeah. on. You need to say what species you plan to exactly. shoot. Exactly. All that kind yeah. of stuff, bag limits, and you got to make sure, like Matt also said, make sure you're in the season, whatever mm, you yeah. shoot. That is very important. Now, if you get these two things in line, hunting license, and you get yeah. the permission, then you're yeah. good. I will an say an you example of that is the fact that um, we out here, we're seeing plenty of um, guinea fowl, but we're leaving them alone because it's just not, it's not the right it's time not, of the year yeah. to shoot Breeding them. Breeding time now. And it's, yeah. You yeah. Whereas, them whereas the pigeons, you can shoot them all year round, no bag limit. Yeah. Same with all the dove species, all year round, no bag limit. Yeah, there's just too so, much of them. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> we, we're well within yeah. you know, what's with, legal. With the rights and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, so you gotta keep it clean. Look, we all wanna enjoy the sport. We yeah. all love yeah. hunting. So if you do those two things, just keep up with the, with the, with the law for the country, uh, yeah. whatever the law mm. is in your country. And you the know. other thing is, a lot of people ask, how do you get permission? Um, that's not an easy thing, because you don't know the farmers, yeah. you don't. But the advice I can give is go to your local air gun club or shooting club. Yes. You're most likely to find the farmers shooting there as well. Correct. Or, and that's how we did it. We oh. met farmers there, we became friends with them. Yeah. And through them met other farmers. We, we go to the, the farmer meetings in the area. We, yeah. we tell them what we do. We do get pest involved. control. Yeah, build relationships. Build, build yeah. up a nice relationship with It farmers. takes time, but you'll get there. Yeah. And, and do it right. Yeah. And, and, and legal mm -hmm. stuff aside, um, you, you're going to always want to respect um, your environment and be responsible yeah. for shooting. Um, it's not illegal to shoot, you know, up into the air in, a, yeah. in an open, um, large piece of land yeah. like this. But it's not necessarily smart either, yeah. depending on what's around you. Or let's say, for example, you you're shooting a bird and this this cattle in the distance, may, maybe not necessarily straight behind, yeah. but in the vicinity. Yeah. You've got to you got to think about that stuff, and you've got to be smart about it, and you've got to be responsible. So. That stuff, um, that's up to you. That's not something yeah. that can be put in in, yeah. in a law. That's up to your own, um, yeah, your own ethics, and, and you got to do that right as well. I think when you and if you do that right, the farmer will will let yeah. you shoot there. So look, yeah. if you if you guys are first time shooting these PCPA rifles, um, they're a little bit more powerful than the normal brake barrels. You know, the the starting the the, the, the entry level side of the yeah. uh, pellet guns, like they say. Um, if you want to shoot these guns, uh, especially the PCPs, a good idea will actually just to go out there, meet up with people that got PCPs, uh, yeah. go to an uh, air rifle club like Wolf also said, yeah. and meet up with them, see how they work, and uh, <laughs> a lot of planes in the air like you can see. That one's quite low. Yeah, this one is very low. <laughs> so go out there, meet up with them, uh, let them tell you a little bit more about these guns, and respect them because they're just as dangerous as what a real firearm is. This is not a firearm; it is still no, an air rifle. Kill. Yeah. Especially it's, now with the slugs, they yeah, they yeah. carry a much more energy downrange. Yeah. yeah. So respect it's, these yeah. guns, keep it safe, and just make sure you shoot safe whatever distance or places or whoever you're shooting with. Just keep it safe. Yeah. And Absolutely. just to show how how we value that permission stuff and all that and the legal legal. Legalities, legality legality yeah. around it is we got all the paperwork sorted out for Matt before he came. Mm, everything yeah. signed with the farmers, everything was ready for him. He just he arrived and he could shoot. Yeah. And without worrying about is it safe or Yeah. Now look it's the the yeah, obviously as a public figure I'm I'm yeah. very, very strict on what mm. uh, when I go hunt that I'm making sure I'm not breaking yeah. any laws yeah. or I'm make sure I have to do everything right because everyone's watching me or yeah, yeah, yeah. me and I'm setting an example for you guys who are watching stuff like this. So, yeah. so uh, yeah, I was very glad that they, 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 mm. these guys are on the ball and sort all that stuff out and, and we can go and have fun without important. having to you worry to. about it. Yeah. And again, you sleep it, better at night. <laughs> and again, it is no effort, really no, no, effort. no effort. To do those two things, like we said, just go out there, get it sorted, and you're, you're golden. Yep. Yeah. Right? Cool. Are yeah. we going to call it the end now? Yeah, I think it's... Because I see a lot of pigeons down yeah, there. and I can uh, see Matt also ah, scouring. Ah, yeah, the there's, there's starlings <laughs> and geese and, and there's pigeons. A, and Starlings, everything is making a good, decent <laughs> noise in the background. So uh, we're going to head out and, uh, yeah, let's take it from let's there. Let's do it. Yeah, let's go shoot. Cool. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, oh, my bum. My bum oh. is killing me like flipping, leaping up my wall.